The Small Business Show, episode 149 for Wednesday, December 13th, 2017. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show by, for, and about small business owners. Sponsors for this episode include Text Expander and Storyblocks. We'll talk a little bit more about them later. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, man. How about you? Doing fantastic. Good. Enjoying the last few weeks of the year, trying to get everything done that I've uh, been putting off. <laughs> trying to, yeah, exactly. Trying to get yes. it all done. That's right. Got well, yeah. as promised, we have not one but two guests with us this week, Shannon. Uh, we have uh, Mihir Shah and Jari Bolander joining us today. Mihir, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. And Jari, thanks for being here be here thanks for having me yeah man uh so it, you jari we, we you guys are an interesting mix because you sort of do things together and then you you have your uh your separate lives professionally too uh jari you just finished writing a book called the entrepreneur ethos and uh and you and me have been doing some some kind of back and forth on promoting that and me here you uh well you're currently you're the ceo of drobo Correct. I got that right. Right. Yes, sir. All right. So um, I, I'd like to talk a little bit about each of your backgrounds and what got us here. And then we can we can talk a little bit about the book. So Mihir, I'll start with you. Your your LinkedIn profile. Uh, and I think I've got it right. Tells the story that you can kind of came to be a CEO slash entrepreneur from the VC side of things where where you started your career. But were there any other like smaller businesses that you've been part of kind of before that? How did how did you get here? Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. It's it, it's a little bit serendipitous, but um, I always view careers uh, as a journey. And, you know, early on in my career, I was in the financial services sector, both in investment banking, as well as private equity or, 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 or VC, as they call it, sure. but, you know, but it, but it kind of turns out that during my career, I've always had some type of a, a turnaround component or flavor of my job. So as a banker, it was always trying to figure out how to help distressed companies as a private equity, uh, you know, investor, it's always, Hey, this company's kind of messed up. We got to go fix it. Uh, and then kind of took that into more of a corporate type environment at both, uh, IBM, as well as Brocade, where, you know, again, the companies were relatively flat and we needed to come up with strategies to kind of grow the business. And I kind of fell in love with the fact that, hey, I don't always just want to be the guy putting the plan together. I want to be the guy that's also implementing the plan. And that's how I really came. <laughs> Drobo opportunity came up. Yeah. Right? Dro no, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's fun to strategize, but it's more fun to, to get, you know, do it and make it happen. Yeah. You know, exactly. And, and, you know, I'm sure you guys are familiar with Drobo. I mean, it was a classic, you know, Silicon Valley darling back in, you know, the late uh, or second half of the first decade in this, in this century, kind of 2005 to 2010, it kind of lost its way a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think we, you know, in the last two and a half years, it's been really, okay, I've learned everything. I've put it on paper. Now let's go see if we can go implement uh, some of these, uh, you know, some of these things. So that's kind of what's, uh, what brought me to this opportunity at, uh, at Drobo. So I'm excited to share, you know, my experiences with, uh, with your listeners. That's awesome. Yeah, That's no, it, and I, we do know the story of Drobo. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've been, we've been uh, on the sidelines for that ride and, and experienced some of it. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's it, they, a turnaround was needed there for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Jari, let's let's bring you in here. Your story is a little more traditional for this show, where uh, I, I think I heard you say once that, uh, well, I'm paraphrasing using our phrase that you found yourself to be somewhat uh, unemployable too, and, and set out on your own. <laughs> we use the term patently unemployable. It's a good here. thing, right? It's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. No, um, yeah, totally. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm. <laughs> done six companies. I really found that the entrepreneur way of life 
is a lot more satisfying than drinking bad corporate coffee and, you know, power death by PowerPoint. So I, you know, found my way into it. And it's one of those things where I just really enjoy solving problems. And, you know, to me, here's point about what he was trying to do. It's that, you know, Hey, let's come up with a plan and then let's go execute it and see what happens. Um, and a lot of times in big corporations, you're a part of that and that's fine. And, and I actually had a, a lot of really good experience at, at big companies, but I kind of wanted to take the reins. And so I, yeah, I'm basically unemployable. <laughs> so. No, that, that's a good thing, man. Like, like Shannon said, we, we, we relish that quality here. It's who we are. That's right. 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 <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, Jari, you, uh, you've written this book called The Entrepreneur Ethos, where you talk about um, the kind of the important things about, well, not being a jerk is one of the themes of this book and that you can run a company and be successful without being a jerk. Uh, so t tell us a little bit more about about the book. Yeah, so um, I started writing this book a couple of years ago, maybe two years ago, um, and was inspired by a lot of things. Um, the first person that inspired me was my late wife, Jane, and that's how I know me here. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, but she, you know, she's no longer with us. Uh, she, she passed away in April of this year uh, from leukemia. Oh, sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And her, her business was PR and marketing. Um, <laughs> and she was a Asian woman entrepreneur and she worked really hard and had a lot of struggles and challenges related to all the things that are going on right now in 2017 with men and the bad behavior in Silicon Valley. And so I, you know, this is my fourth book and I was really looking for something to, to write about that sort of what I felt the entrepreneur lifestyle was about and, and not from an external point of view, from a, you know, Zuckerberg's 10 things that are successful, you know, Larry Ellison's five things he does early in the morning, you know, Larry Page's single secret to success. Those were all externally tactical driven things. I, I really wanted to explore what it was internally or into, into that. What was the spark? What was, you know, what's the, what's the why inside people? Because I mean, you know, if you know anything about math, this is, this is a, this job's lunacy. Like it's crazy <laughs> to, to take on this sort of stuff. Right. I mean, yeah. success is fleeting. It's the probability is really low and it's almost like you're almost like, and, and when, when Jane, my late wife and I would talk about this, you know, she always encouraged me to, to speak my truth and to, and to share what, what I know. And more importantly, she had a lot of great insights and, and from a woman's perspective in a minority, and she was in sports PR before. So, you know, a five foot two Asian woman in sports PR is like, the 1% of the 1%. I mean, it just doesn't exist. So um, she really inspired me to take a real hard look at what it really means to be an entrepreneur. And she did in, in interviewing people. And, I, you know, I've interviewed um, uh, me here and about 30 other entrepreneurs. It, it struck me as people that I look up to and the people like me here who, who is, who, who exemplifies the ethos, uh, the way he runs his company, uh, and all the people and all the experience I've had, I really felt that that story needed to be told and it needed to be told from, a examples of people that are doing these, these are the good people, the bad people. And then through that came about this ethos of, in my opinion, the exemplars, like if you want to be the best entrepreneur in the world, then you need to aspire 
to the ethos. And, you know, as I started to write it and it just sort of, you know, in writing the, the, you know, you don't pick the story, the story picks you. (laughs) It's just the way it is. And I was really pleased with, with how it came out. And, and, and more importantly, I wanted it to be accessible to those that weren't entrepreneurs because, you know, I have a lot of friends that are entrepreneurs, they have spouses and they're like, this is the craziest job ever. I don't understand why, you know, my spouse is obsessive about the one metric that matters and he hasn't gotten paid in a year and he's still into it. And you're just like, Oh my God. So yeah, that's sort of the inspiration. That's awesome. Yeah. And like I mentioned, you know, we talked before the show a little bit. Uh, I, I love that in, in the context of it, you've also uh, kind of created this roadmap for, you know, uh, how to how to be the good you know entrepreneur and the things that you need to do and and uh, following through the chapters so it's it, it's really a good read and uh, I'm really enjoying it it's great oh, thank you thank you Got I, I have a quick question for you so there's a section uh, in the entrepreneur ethos where you you talk about timing a lot and importance of you know when coming to market and that kind of thing and and one of the things that really stuck out uh, to me is you mentioned patience versus procrastination. Uh, and uh, I think that it probably struck home because I'm always questioning myself, you know, it's like, Oh, am I just putting it off? Or, you know, is there a reason why I can't get this thing done or launch? Can can you talk about that for for a moment with with our listeners? Sure. So, um, patience versus procrastination is something that, you know, every entrepreneur faces. Um, there's things that you have to do in order to move your business forward. And then there's things, even if you moved your, even if you did them all, nothing's going to happen. And this has a lot to do with the market environment and the timing that you literally have no control over. I mean, a great example is blockchain, you know, crypto currency. I mean, who would have known <laughs> three, four years ago, people were, oh, blockchain is the next biggest thing. And a lot of people, well, you know, I don't really want to put that in my product. Ah, it's not going to happen. Um, but a lot of the people that believed in it had patience. And and as that patience wore on, it started to become more and more important. Um, something that is just one example of, well, that's a, that's a timing issue. Like people just weren't ready for it. When it, when it comes to, and for an entrepreneur, Typically, a lot of times it's their ability or desire to want to start something. And so, for example, let's just say you're at a big corporate job and, you know, you're making whatever you're making and you're like, you know, I've always wanted to run my own business. Patients would say, you know what, I've got certain things I need to do. I'm going to set myself up, you know. I'm going to, you know, I've got these, I've got a plan and I'm going to be patiently working towards that. I'm going to wait for, you know, my wife to get a job or my husband to to get a job or whatever. Like there, there's just, you know, day to day life. Like there is some things that have to happen, but once those things happen and you're not doing it, fascinating. And most of the time procrastination is fear. Like you're afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Fear of, but it's, you know, fear of both success and failure, right? Because they're both unknowns. So yes, correct. And, and so once you realize that it's fear and of the unknown, I mean, the the first part of the ethos, the, the, the main, the, the number one thing is, you know, failure is an option, but never the end result. And once you realize that, then you just go off and if things happen, they happen. And of course you don't always want to fail, but again, <laughs> but you can learn things and, and, and can, absolutely, and, absolutely. And, and you know yeah. that you can survive it too. Once, once you've been through it at least once. And I mean, I, I think it's, I, I was going to call it a rite of passage, but it's, it's more than that. It's, it's just part sure. of, it's part of the process. It's learning. It's, yeah, it's valuable. Absolutely. It's, it's not just a thing you have to do. It's a thing you almost want to do, even though perhaps living through it in the moment isn't the most fun thing. But yeah, true. So, not at so, all. All right. Hey, I want to take a minute here and talk about our two sponsors for this episode. The first of which is Text Expander from the great folks at Smile. Uh, this is a utility. I, you know, I'm an efficiency freak. And Text Expander is a tool that I have been using in my businesses and and now, of course, in my personal life for as long as I can remember. Let's let's say 
you get home from like a conference or you're at like I go to these Pepcom events where I get all kinds of contact information from people. We all do this, right? You go to a thing, you come back. It doesn't even have to be a big deal, like a cocktail party even. And you come back and you've got a collection of new contacts and you want to follow up with them. Well, normally you could, uh, I, I guess the the non-text expander way for the efficient person would be to write an email to one of them and then copy that email, right? And the email says, Hey, Cindy, it was great getting to meet you. Uh, I really appreciated talking with you uh, about that geeky thing that your company is doing. Right. Thanks so much, Cindy. I'll see you next time. Whatever. Uh, so you'd write that letter and then you'd copy it and you paste it uh, into the next one. Right. Where you'd it would be maybe to Tim. And but you'd have to go and change a couple of things. In each of those letters, right? You have to be really careful that you changed Cindy's name to Tim twice, right? Because I said it twice, I think, uh, at least twice. And then you'd also have to change what you talked uh, about because what you talked about with Cindy, the geeky features, maybe you talked with Tim about, uh, you know, maybe a more human feature of his product. I don't know, whatever it is. Uh, or maybe you talked with Tim about a job or, you know, a gig that, that might come to fruition for you or your company. There's a lot of opportunity for human error there. And that's inefficient. And it's also risky. So what text expander would do is let you create that snippet with spots for you to fill in a form and you'd trigger that snippet like boom you know uh you say comma met met right and text expanders running on your system all the time and it would jump right in and populate whatever wherever you were which in this case would be an email but it would first ask you, what's the person's name? So you type Tim. Now it fills in Tim in all the places that you wanted it to fill in. What did you talk to Tim about? Okay, here. Where did you meet Tim, right? Because you could have this form letter that's not just for the cocktail party you were at last night. It could be, you know, whatever. And now you've completely eliminated the opportunity for human error here. Great, great stuff. And you can do all kinds of things. I have my address in there so I can type D-H-A-D-D -D and boom, it puts my address in. I have Shannon's address in there so I don't send stuff to the wrong place for him. It's really, really great. And you can go check it out. Visit textexpander.com slash podcast. And that gets you 20% off of your first year of Text Expander. Our thanks to Text Expander for becoming a sponsor of this show. Our second sponsor for this show is Storyblocks. Where at storyblocks.com, that's S T O R Y B L O C K S dot com slash S B S, you can take advantage of their triple bundle offer, which they have given us to give to you. Storyblocks gets you access to 400,000 of the best stock images, 150,000 of the best stock video clips, and 100,000 of the best stock audio clips. Now, what are these stock things? Let me put it in terms that we might use. When we publish the show, right, we come up with images. Where do we get those images from? We get them from Storyblocks. We go to storyblocks.com slash SBS. We sign up, we get it. Then we take that image that we pull and maybe there's two images that we want to merge together. No problem. Download both of them, pull them into your image editor, and I can put, put them together. I can add other text if I want, whatever I want to do. But the basis of this is this image or images that I got from Storyblocks. These are high quality images and you get them royalty free. Storyblocks.com slash SBS gets you access to their triple bundle package. And what that means is normally Storyblocks would charge you 149 bucks a year for images, 149 bucks a year for video, 149 bucks a year for audio. Well, the triple bundle package is 149 bucks for the full year of all of that. Now that you know about Storyblocks, to get our special triple bundle offer, go to storyblocks.com slash SBS. But don't wait. This special offer is only available in December. That's storyblocks.com slash SBS. Go get your triple bundle offer right now. Our thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, 
You've got a question for me here. As someone that's, you know, involved, I would, you know, day by day, making sure products are going to ship and what's going to happen. I mean, can, can you speak to that as well? What, what, you know, what judgments you're using to it's like, okay, let's hold this back since it's not ready or whatever, or let's just get it out. So we, you know, we all know the important importance of shipping. Can, can you speak to that a little bit? Yep. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, it's, uh, I always like to characterize it is I'm always stepping on landmines, right. And trying to figure out how, how to diffuse it. I, you know, uh, I wish there was a toolkit that some of these professional, you know, bomb diffusers had to, to, to run a business. And in our situation was a little bit different, right? We came into a business that had a set of products, uh, and validated the market, but you know, the products were relatively old, and so we had to refresh uh, the whole product line now. And there were absolutely instances where, you know, one side of your brain is saying, I need the revenue. I got to go ship it. And you end up shipping something and maybe it's not fully, you know, QA'd or it's not fully tested. And then you end up paying for it on the backside from support calls. And so there's absolutely kind of a, you know, a fine balance. And I think we've kind of gotten to a point now over the last two and a half years or so, we've kind of figured it out. Look, we will sacrifice revenue uh, and some, some time to make sure we get the correct that has been tested, that has been quality tested. And so we get less blowback because the worst thing that could happen in a company uh, um, our size, um, as well as in the kind of prosumer spaces, if you get a couple of bad reviews and people go out on Twitter and start bashing you, it could severely impact your sales going forward. So, um, so I've made the mistake of pushing stuff out. I've learned very quickly. And now we make sure that, Hey, make sure this thing is kind of 99.9% .9 tested among all the things that could potentially go wrong. So, uh, so it's, it's a fine balance and everybody's going to come uh, uh, you know, you're going to get that, uh, what I like to call the trigger finger to ship because you want the revenue. You sure. just, you just want the revenue and, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. and sometimes you, you know, you kind of, uh, the art is being able to step back and say, no, I don't want the revenue because if I put a quality product out there, the long tail on that revenue will be a lot larger than kind of the, 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 the short term mentality, the short term gain. Yeah. And, and I, yep. I, I should raise my hand. This happened before you uh, took over there, but I am definitely one of those people that, that got out there and, and, uh, had been burned by, by a prior Drobo product and, and made sure my audience knew about it to avoid that problem <laughs> for themselves. So, well, yeah, I mean, I, like, right. You know, even for this show, it's like our, our audience is, is the most important thing. So it was like, all sure. right, yep. We told you to get this, then we had problems. So don't get it. But that's not the case with Drobo anymore. Just case that wasn't clear well that, it's you know that, that's like an entire different show that you know we can yeah. do about uh you know reestablishing that connection with your users and uh you know like Mahir is talking about making sure they know we're only shipping you know the the best product we can that kind of thing so yeah that's uh that's great yeah, yeah i'll tell you a real funny i'll tell you a real funny story we launched this product called the 5c which was the first usb-c type device out in the marketplace. And this was last year. I was so excited to get it out. I was so excited to get it out. We got it out and we had a bunch of blowback because we didn't communicate to uh, our customers that you needed to put that USB-C cable a certain way. So it had to be, you know, uh, you had to essentially flip it around. So a lot of people got oh. half the speed that they were that they were expecting and all they needed to do was flip it around. So now what we have with that product is we have a little I think a little yellow flag or something says this goes in this one and this goes in that one. But, you know, again, yeah. you know, our bad as a management team to, to, to get that out there. Yeah. Right. That's great. Right. Yeah. If you'd taken a little more time before you shipped it, but a beta tester might've picked up on that for you and you could have avoided it. Yeah. That's interesting. Cool. Yeah. So, so talk, talk a little bit about how, how you two are connected, uh, you know, Jari and, and what, what's your background uh, with, with Mahir? So, uh, Jane, my late wife's PR firm, uh, does PR for Drobo. Uh, but before that, uh, me here's wife, Amitha and Jane were friends in high school. And so, you know, when, when we started dating, we, you know, them a couple times and got to know each other and, you know, when, when me here took over at Drobo, you know, he gives Jane a call and he says, Hey, I got this 
PR problem I need you to solve. <laughs> <That's great>. So <laughs> she's we're, like, we're okay. Talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and this was a couple of years ago. And, and so what, what's it's been great is that, you know, I mean, I, you know, I really respect what me here's done at Drobo. We, we are f- kind of cut from the same cloth. You know, we've got the same general attitude about things and kind of upbringing. And, you know, even though, you know, he's Indian American and I'm, you know, Caucasian American, we, we just, you know, we could be brothers from another mother kind of thing. And, yep. you know, it's been great to, uh, you know, through this really difficult time with, with Jane's illness and Jane's passing, you know, focus on the positive things that she did. And, you know, both of us are, are very committed to putting forth what we feel is the best way to do business. And that was something that we had talked about even before Jane got sick and even before, you know, we started actually working more together. And 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 then when, you know, when I came out with the book and, you know, I wanted of someone that you respect that follows your ethos that you feel is you know the incarnation of it and i immediately thought of me here and and it was just great that we could you know do that and and you know wonderful what he's trying to do at drobo is wonderful uh you know what i'm trying to do uh, with pushing forward the ethos um and and really i you know i truly believe that you can you can run your business inclusive way that'll make you more resilient and because there's lots of problems to solve and you can't you just can't be looking for closed-minded about who can be an entrepreneur who to fund i mean this should be open to everyone everyone should have equal opportunity to succeed and in entrepreneurship's the ultimate like <laughs> you know i mean <laughs> the epitome of that yeah yeah, it is. It's you. I mean, you know, professional sports, maybe, but it's like it's a meritocracy. You know, it's a lot of luck, obviously, but luckiest are the ones that work the hardest that, that adhere to the ethos. And I'm just really happy to see over the last couple months that, you know, people that are running ethical, inclusive and solid businesses, you know, they're finally the recognition they deserve. And it's because of the other people that aren't doing the right thing. Right. And I'm just appalled beyond appalled by this, this some of this bad behavior that's just unacceptable on, on so many levels. And it's just wonderful to see someone like me here you know, stepping up and being like, no, we don't run it that way. We run it this way because the, the running it this way is the right way to go. Yeah. And I mentioned timing earlier and certainly the, the timing for, you know, you, this work is, uh, it, it's excellent right now, certainly with everything going on. We plan that. <laughs> <laughs> totally. we, mentioned, we mentioned luck too, right? I mean, you, you know, getting things together. Yeah, so, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. it's true. That's sort of a meta lesson in and of itself, right? I mean, the book is about this, but the book itself comes out and you're saying the right thing, you're doing the right thing, you're speaking your truth. And Suddenly, you know, you're in the middle of this much larger conversation that you couldn't possibly have started on your own. You know, I, oh. I don't don't get me wrong. I don't mean to question your PR skills, but holy cow. If you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a genius PR. But it's actually because yeah, sure. it's because Jane was a genius and I just happened to be lucky enough to marry her. And she taught me all these things. And I'm grateful every day for her short amount of time she was. but. I can tell you in no uncertain terms, it's 100% luck. <laughs> it's just trying to ride the wave. It's like Mavericks, man. It's just like, hold on. Let's see, you know, let's, let's see how this goes. It's also preparation, right? I mean, it's, you didn't just, you didn't try to capitalize, uh, you know, in a, in a heartbeat upon what's happening here. You just, it just so happened that this thing that you'd put a lot of time and effort into comes out at a time when, you know, everybody's now thinking about this. So, I, you know, luck, yes, from a timing perspective, but not from the hard work perspective. Right. So well, well, well thank, thank you for that. And, and yeah, I, I, I do believe that. I mean, timing is everything, but you also got to put the work in. Yeah. Well, and right. luck is, is, you know, taking being ready to take advantage of an opportunity, but you're not just ready for no reason. You got to get there. So, yeah. 
we totally um, agree. we it's great. we always like to talk about uh, we love mistakes here and you know the fact that you guys were friends before you started working together is sort of like the, the most classic mistake except you guys have proven that it works so you're the exception to the rule but Mihir, I'll bring you in uh again it, it do you have a favorite mistake that you've made throughout uh, it, from anywhere in your career that uh, that you want to share with our listeners here? Uh, getting into the hardware business. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, I, I think they call it, you know, hardware because it's hard. Uh, you, you know, coming into this business, um, you know, thinking, you know, the brand was fairly prevalent in the markets that we served, but, uh, you know, just the amount of capital required in the hardware business, I absolutely underestimated. I have this conversation with our investors all the time. It's like, you know what, it sucks up so much cash. Uh, and for such a long period of time that, uh, um, you know, I, 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 I wouldn't say it's necessarily a mistake. It's, it's more or less, Hey, it's a mistake that we got into and we got to go figure it out. Right. Uh, and so, you know, fortunately we were able to bring on a, you know, a, a team of folks that, you know, understand supply chain and hardware and, 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 and those types of things. But look, I, I, I make a mistake every day. Right. Um, you know, we had, um, uh, you know, several things uh, from a product standpoint, you know, what product should we prioritize? And again, we took the short term view and, you know, looking back on it, man, we should have, we should have done this. And we just had a conversation today. Uh, hey, should we have taken this capital that this investor offered? And we ended up not taking it. And I'm like, damn, I wish I would have taken it. So it, it, it it's kind of a, 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 you know, the way that I like to position it is you're always going to make mistakes and there'll probably be a mistake every day. It's how do you respond to it and how do you learn from it? Cause it's really easy to quit and be like, you know what? I'm just going to go back to a big company. I was making three times as much money as I am right now. Uh, you know, and life was easy, but it's like <laughs> Jari said, it, it's a little bit of an adrenaline rush. Right. And to take the view is some, someone somewhere in the world, has had a similar issue that you have had forms like LinkedIn and, 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 and Facebook, it's okay to go ask for help. And it's okay to say, Hey, what did you do in this scenario? So, so that's kind of how I characterize it. You're going to make mistakes. The question is finding that help and, and figuring it out that that's what this is all about. It's not about anything else. It's, 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 it's about the journey. Yeah. So I, that, that actually brings up a good question, which I think is something that a lot of well, a lot of entrepreneurs at any stage struggle with. I certainly struggle with it regularly is, it, you, you know, you have you have to believe in yourself it, at some level. You have to have a little bit of, of ego, which is is sort of a, a loaded word these days. But I but I mean it in the in the positive sense that you have to believe in what it is that you're doing. Um, and and that it, combined with the fact that, you know, you're pouring all your time into your business makes it difficult to find those people that you can sort of look to and say, oh, Hey, I'm stuck. Got any advice for me? So it, like it, do you have any thoughts on how folks can go about finding those, uh, you know, that board of advisors, that, that, that the mentors, whatever, whatever term you want to apply the, the, you know, the people that they can talk to. Yeah. So like, you know, first and foremost, I mean, you have to be self-aware, like in yeah. this, you, you, you have to know that you need help because when you come into a, a CEO as a company and a company that's been around for 10 or 12 years and they've had their own cultural issues, um, you know, you, you have to be like, Hey, uh, I, I'm coming here to go help, help this company. And, and, and we're going to go do this together. And the way we're going to do it is, become self-aware of the problems that, that exist. So that's kind of the first thing. The second thing, I mean, there's several groups out there, right? And it, fortunately enough, we live in Silicon Valley where, you know, one or two phone calls can get you in front of someone uh, who either has had that experience uh, and also is willing to help. Um, there are parts of the United States that I've kind of lived in before where people are a little bit you know, they don't want to help you so much, but yeah. you know, in Silicon Valley, it's probably two phone calls to somebody and say, Hey, 
I need help with this. And they'll, it's a warm intro and, it, and it's a, it's a free call, right? So that's, that's one is using your existing networks or a couple degree separation, you know, through your LinkedIn network. Uh, the third piece of it is, you know, finding a good kind of um, net, like a peer group, right. Is again, most often, you know, I, I belong to a CEO peer group and these are company, you know, people who manage companies kind of our size and bigger, they've kind of come across that problem. So that again, Getting the answer is the easy part. The hard part is knowing that you're not, you don't have all the answers, which is what team expects when you're a CEO is you think you know everything. But in reality, um, I, I, I think CEOs know very little. It's their ability to connect the dots and connect the people with those dots and get answers answered yeah. Yeah. or questions answered. Uh, that's good. That's good advice. It, yeah. It, it, the, I think a good takeaway for anyone is, is, when you're running your own business, you don't have to be the one that has all the answers. You just need to be willing to find the people that can find them with you. Yeah. Yep. That's great. Hey, Jerry, I have, I have one more question for you. I, I was curious, sure. any surprises about how uh, the entrepreneur ethos, you know, has been received by the, you know, entrepreneurial business community, anything that, that uh, you weren't prepared for about feedback or anything like that? Um, not, not really. I mean, it's, it's been well received, um, to the people that, that, that have been reading it. I I will say, uh, again, the timing on all of this is, is pretty spectacular. And, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get more inquiries uh, from colleges and, um, and accelerator programs because a lot of the time, and and I know this because I've been through two accelerators, 500 startups and um, Launchpad Digital Health. Those types of places don't teach you the internal mechanics. They don't teach you the the internal skills. They're they're worried about growth hacking and 10% per per week and blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, marketing and like the external stuff, how to grow your business. But they don't focus on how to grow you as an entrepreneur. Sure. Typically seen this with... Uh, women and minority entrepreneurs. And I've been getting a lot of positive feedback from women and minority entrepreneurs about, well, you know, what's the operating system of an entrepreneur? Because traditionally they've been left out of the game. And, you know, my, my goal um, and, and my commitment to, to Jane um, is, and in her living in her memory is to change that. I don't think that there should ever be a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, captive in entrepreneur. I don't think that this job uh, requires any special skills than you know what I put forth in the ethos. And and so for me to champion that um, and to get the feedback I'm getting um, is is really wonderful. And and I and especially have been surprised with the minority. Uh, fee entrepreneurs, because again, I think they're the ones that are least represented. They're the ones that are that, that don't get funded as much. Um, they don't have that peer group, uh, as me here mentioned. Um, but you know, for me, for my peer group, I actually belong to a a, a group called Founders Network, uh, which has got a lot of great entrepreneurs all over the country, women, minorities, all sorts of different businesses, and that's a real powerful. And I have this problem. And that's the thing is me here mentioned he's spot on. Like you have to realize that you will not know everything. <laughs> and the second you realize that is the second you have been set free. Yeah. Because yeah. this is the hardest job in the world. The hardest job. Because you are creating something from nothing and you are battling the status quo. So the universe is on its merry way and you, right, you're some knucklehead that says, "Hey, look at me, look at me." And you got to move the universe and and this sounds like, you know, oh, that's a little too uh, flamboyant, but it's it's 100% true. You got to move the world to your point of view. Yeah. It's some segment of the world, otherwise you don't have customers. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. No, it's true. And and, true. and people love the status quo. Oh, change resistance is such a force. Yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, and so, yeah, so I, you know, it's it, game. Uh-huh. You really need to have the self-awareness. Why 
to realize when you don't know what you don't know and you need to have some cases to ask for help yeah. because no one does it alone. No, no one you can't, you can't do it alone. It's true. It's true. Well, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for, uh, for coming on the show and, and sharing these lessons with our listeners and, and just sharing them with us, frankly. Uh, Jari, why don't you tell folks where they can find you and find, uh, find the book, which of course we'll put a link to in the show notes too. Thanks. So yeah, so I'm at the, the daily That's my blog where I talk about ways to be a better entrepreneur. Um, you can get the book at Amazon, you know, both ebook and, and print. Cool. I mean, I would just love it for people to, to get the book. Tell me what you think and let's just make a better entrepreneur culture. I think that's, my main goal there you go that's a yeah it's a, it's a good goal go ahead yeah and we are offering yeah we are offering all your listeners a discount if you go to our drobo store www.drobostore.com and enter small biz b-i-z-10 all drobo products <laughs> that's well, awesome that is the sign of an on-the-spot CEO right there taking advantage of every marketing opportunity. I love it. I love it. It's good it's stuff. Perfect, it's good man. stuff. There, there's all, a, all, if there, always if they, be closing. Always yeah. be closing. That's right. There's coffee Somebody's, at the door. Yeah. That's right. Somebody's entering that coupon code right now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So good. Uh, you got it. Thank you. Folks, yeah, thanks awesome. so much for listening. Make sure to check everything out. We'll put all this stuff in the show notes, of course. Me here and Jari, thanks so much for joining us. This was a blast. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks for having us. Thank you. Folks, keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next week. 